Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. You may have seen my video where I created this dust boot for the x carve CNC. In particular, this fits the DeWalt writer. However, I was a little bit concerned that as the writer was going down onto the workpiece, so it was compressing all the bristles in this uh, dust boot, and it was perhaps hampering the flow of the machine. So a chap called George Savage, uh, having seen this video, uh, said, why don't I try another idea? And what George has suggested is that rather than fixing this on the router, so therefore it's going up and down uh, with the Z-axis movement, fix it to the gantry so it's not attached in any way to the Z-motion. So it just stays here. And the advantage of this is, is that when you have a workpiece, uh, you can have the dust boot now sitting on top of the workpiece all the time. It's never going to go any lower, it's never going to go any higher. And the writer just moves through it. Let me show you how I made it. Now, in order to provide a sort of framework for the fixing of the uh, new type of dust boot, uh, I didn't actually want to drill any holes in this part of the uh, X carve. So, in order to avoid that, what I've done is uh, here is a screw uh, which I've replaced with a longer one, which is used to hold a stepper motor in at the back. And I've also re re replaced the screw that is equivalent to this on the other side. Uh, and by doing that, by using longer screws there, it's given me a place where I can establish a fixing. And I've created uh, this piece. Uh, and this piece has uh, two holes to take uh, the uh, screws, but also on uh, the side that's against uh, the plate here, uh, those holes have been made bigger uh, so that the, uh, the nuts which are there uh, can be accommodated. And the length of this piece is exactly the length of this uh, main bracket here. And I've measured it and uh, carefully created this so that fits on over those screws and over those nuts. And it sits with a gap underneath here. My original intention was that I would uh, put uh, nuts on the inside here to secure this uh, completely and I still have that option if I need to use it. Then I've created this piece of wood. Now this piece has got a large channel here uh, which is to take uh, this piece of wood and potentially uh, any nuts and the, the rest of the, uh, the little bolts that stick through there. Uh, you can't see it, but directly underneath uh, this uh, stepper motor is the other end of its shaft, and therefore I've had to create this channel for that. And also, you probably can't see it, but uh, at the back here, there are the heads of some screws. So I've had to create this little bit of channel here. And then uh, this section uh, actually has very slightly curved corners. So my piece of wood has curved uh, corners here and here all the way along and if one makes this carefully uh, it will then just fit in very easily. Now there's one other detail I need to point out if one were to look down here uh, you would see uh, part of the stepper motor that's here and its uh, pulley uh, which has the uh, drive belt on it for the uh, X carriage. Now uh, I'm not certain whether there's any possibility that that could interfere with this block. And so underneath here, I've created this cutout section. And, and that is exactly where that uh, pulley uh, would be. But I think actually it's free. Uh, but anyway, it's just a precaution. So that slides in nicely. And my original intention was that uh, these two pieces, that piece at the back, uh, and this piece uh, would be fixed together by putting a screw through here and the equivalent place the other side. Uh, and that, that then uh, would stop this from being able to move uh, this way. It's already impossible for it to move upwards and it's also impossible for it to move that way. So that would provide the final fixing of this piece. Uh, but at the moment I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be uh, pretty immobile without that, but I've got the option of putting that screw in if need be. Now remember, you must not glue this piece to this piece, because were you to do that, then you'd never get this out again.
Now we now need something that fits on top of uh, this block here, uh, which then gives a fixing point for the sliding part of the mechanism. And I've constructed a pair of blocks, one each side, one this side and one the other side. And they have a little T-piece in here, which fits into that channel, which helps to locate them. And they're held in place by a pair of screws. Now, bearing in mind that in order to take everything apart, you're going to have to undo these screws and remove the block. Uh, perhaps on one side it could, could be fixed uh, permanently, but, uh, and then it's only coming out this way. But uh, I'm keeping uh, both blocks uh, removable in case I have to do some maintenance later on. So these can be fixed on. I'll just fix this one back into place now. And the same for the other side. And these have threaded inserts in, uh, which allows me then on either side uh, to have a sliding mechanism. And it's at the bottom of the sliding mechanism that we would fix uh, the actual dust boot itself. And the way this is constructed is very simple. Um, I've uh, cut this slot here, uh, which allows it to move up and down. Uh, there are some markings down here, uh, which allows me to judge uh, where this one is and get the other one at the same height, uh, so it helps keep things level. Uh, I've got this little thicknessing piece here, which allows me to put a magnet in the base here. Uh, and then I've got some shaping here, uh, which allows uh, the whole thing to fit in place uh, without interfering uh, with anything else on the carriage. And I have a similar one, it's a mirror image for the other side. So I've got my two adjustable slides in place and these can be moved up and down, they've got a magnet underneath. And then uh, along comes the actual dust boot, which would be something like this. And it would have a pair of magnets, one there, one there. And this would go up and make contact with the magnets there and be held in place like so. And here I have my opportunity to point out one of my bishops. I designed this and I thought this is great and it looked really good when I saw it on the computer screen. And I put in the channel where the bristle was going to go. Uh, but guess what? <laughs> the bristle channel is on the wrong side. It should be underneath here. But never mind. So the one I'm actually going to make is a mirror image of this. Uh, and it will have its bristle channel on this side. And then when it's put the right way up, it will be spot on. And you can probably see there's a, a small gap around here, uh, which allows the uh, router to move freely up and down along the z-axis as required, uh, without the dust boot itself getting in the way. And there we have it, just got to trim off these little bits here, give it a sand, and we're ready to go. Uh, the channel's on the correct side this time, and that looks uh, quite neat. Now it's really important to make sure you get the magnet polarity right at this stage, and so uh, I've already done the left-hand one, but for the right-hand one, uh, I'm going to get that attached, uh, just like so. I'm then going to push the magnet into the hole and slide it off. And now I'm going to make a little mark on here so I can be certain when I take this magnet out that I've got it round the right way. I'd just like to show you how I'm holding these slides in place. Uh, I've used what they call a Bristol lever. Uh, some people call it a Bristol knob, but it's a Bristol lever. Uh, and basically it's got a... a a handle or lever here and it's got a thread attached here and you can turn this around turn it all the way around if you wish but to save it having to be rotated completely it's got a built-in ratchet mechanism you pull the lever back move it over let it go back down into the ratchet position and so on so you never need to rotate it through 360 degrees now in this situation this is quite useful because I can move it back a bit uh, ratchet, move it back and so on. Uh, but in actual fact, the amount of movement that's necessary in order to get the slides moving is, is relatively small. I've had to use spacers here and it's not because my uh, Bristol levers 
have such a long thread, it's because I wanted to bring the whole thing out from here so it doesn't get mixed up uh, in any way with the mechanism of the motor going up and down. And my only worry now is whether these magnets under here are going to be strong enough to support uh, not only the bracket itself but also the weight of the hose. And bearing in mind uh, I haven't got any of the bristle on yet, mind you, that hardly weighs anything. Now the workflow for a job using this new dust boot is pretty simple. I've done the uh, $H homing command. I'm now going to move uh, the spindle so it's at the right place to set the uh, job uh, specific homing point by issuing the G92 X0 Y0 Z0 command and that's set. Uh, but I now want to put the uh, new dust boot on. And so I'm going to move this to a convenient position so I can slide this underneath the cutter. I've just raised the cutter and I'm just going to move it back towards me. So it's now in a convenient position. I can get this underneath and that's up in a nice uh, tight position. Now you can probably see that this dust boot is not sitting as it should be nicely on top of the workpiece. So I'm going to loosen off both sides here and I'm going to raise it. And I'm raising it so it's just touching uh, the top of the workpiece. So I'm happy with that and I'm now going to connect my extractor hose. And so I think we're ready to go. So I've loaded my G-code file. I just need to start the spindle and then I can send it. So that's the job complete and you can see that there's uh, only just a tiny bit of dust here and frankly with the dust boot uh, spanning this narrow piece of work I think one should expect a little bit of dust to escape. But there's none at the back, there's none at the sides, just a tiny bit here. Well I'm, I'm jolly pleased with that, I think that's made an excellent job. I think that's a great improvement on my original design. So thank you George Savage for putting the idea into my head and thank you for watching. Take care, bye bye.